Well, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here in this massive hall. I can't believe that all of you decided that coming to talk about the topics we're going to talk about tonight was the top priority in your life. <laughs> but, but let's see if we can uh, justify that. You know, that might be a good, that might be a good aim. See if we could make it worthwhile. So, um, to make your decision correct. So, uh, you may know or not that I was on a television show last night, Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you know that. Um, some of you, anyways. Um, I can't say I enjoyed it. Really, really, it's funny, you know, like, and I think as, as I've got farther along in doing whatever it is that I happen to be doing, I find those events more and more uh, stressful. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's the proclivity of everything. Everything has to be mangled in some sense into a preset format, you know, and, and the, the fundamental format really is that everything has to be political, you know, and everything isn't political, so that's not helpful when you're trying to discuss things that aren't political, and I mean, I'm not complaining about it, but, well, I suppose I am. Um, um, it, it's just, it's, it's surprising to me how, 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 um, how much it, how much it takes out of me, say compared to doing an event like this, which I really enjoy doing. Like I spent a lot of time preparing, and there's a lot of you, and I really want it to go well and all that. But this is this is much less dreadful. <laughs> I guess that's right. And you know, and then there's the the strange constraints on format. You know, people ask very complex questions. And, and then you have a minute to answer. And, you know, there's something, there's something downright sinful about answering a really complicated question in a minute, because it sort of suggests that complex questions have answers that take one minute, and they don't. They have answers that take God, sometimes they take decades, and sometimes they take thousands of years, you know? But of course, I can't expect a television show to allow for thousands of years, but but the format itself works against the kind of thought that's necessary to actually have the discussions that are necessary. And so, um, anyways, having said all that, it went, it went, it went all right, um, I would say. Uh, there were no nasty surprises, and particularly, and it was a civil discussion. Um, whether it was a productive discussion or not is, is a different matter, but it wasn't an unproductive discussion, and so that's something. But there was one question that came up, and I thought I would actually start talking about that question tonight, because I've never been happy, I've been asked this question a lot, and I've never been happy with the answer that I've given to it, and I've never really been able to exactly get my I, I've never been able to figure out exactly why I haven't been happy with the question. And so I'm going to try to answer it properly tonight. And then I'm going to talk more generally about 12 rules about the book. Now, it's fine. This question is directly relevant to the book. And so it should make for a good lead in. But it'll enable us to talk about something that I think is really very much worth talking about. And I hope I can formulate the problem properly and then formulate the proper answer at least more coherently than I've managed. It's, see, I, ha I have this, I followed this rule for a very long time, which I actually found w was a Socratic rule. I didn't know this until really quite recently, until I wrote 12 Rules for Life. Socrates said that he had a, a daemon, and by which he meant an internal voice. And um, he said that it all, he always listened to it. And then that was what made him different from other people, that he always listened to this voice. And the voice didn't tell him what to do. It told him what not to do. And um, when the Delphic Oracle proclaimed that Socrates was the wisest man in 
Greece, um, in Athens and in Greece, uh, one of the reasons Socrates attributed her decision to deem him the wisest man was because, well, she said he knew he knew nothing, but he knew in part that he knew nothing, at least in part because he was always listening to the voice of his daemon, his internal conscience. And then I just found out the other day that the word democracy comes from the same root, which is really interesting. Like, I, I had no idea that that was the case, because what it suggests, it's, 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 it's so fascinating looking at how words are related to one another historically, because you find strange connections between ideas that you would never imagine, and sometimes they're unbelievably profound. And so, the, the basic, what happened historically is that, well, so there was the concept of the Socratic daemon. Now, it was the daemon that Socrates listened to when he decided that he was not going to run when the Athenians decided that they were going to put him to death, the Athenian aristocrats, right? Because they thought that he was corrupting the youth by, you know, talking to them and telling them the truth. And I suppose that's certainly grounds for chasing someone out of your town. Um, anyways, they gave him plenty of notice because they didn't really want to kill him. They just wanted to get the old goat to hell out to some other city where he could cause trouble there. And he, his friends were, you know, making plans to, to scurry him away from Athens. Um, and he went out and consulted his daemon and it told him not to leave. And that was a big shock to Socrates because, of course, he didn't want to die. And, uh, but yet, he had decided that he was always going to follow the dictates of the daemon. And he, um, so he did something that only a philosopher would do, was reversed his assumptions. He thought, oh, well, I was afraid of dying. And my daemon said, stick around. And so I must be wrong. It must be worse to be to risk not following that internal voice than to risk this form of death, you know, which is a question you have to really wrestle with, and one his, friend, one his friends weren't very happy about, but in any case, he didn't run, and we have two good court-like documents attesting to that, one written by someone named Xenophon, and the other by Plato. They're very interesting documents. I would highly recommend reading them. They're very short. And the reason, one of the reasons I would recommend reading them, apart from the fact that they're fascinating and, and, and short, is that you, you also get the sense from, from what Socrates wrote that because he had lived his life fully, you know, no holds barred in some sense, that he could let it go when the time came. 